Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be looking at solving linear inequalities. Now, inequality basically means instead of an equal sign, we have an inequality sign. So this is greater than or equal to or greater than or less than or less than or equal to. So it just means that it's something replaced by an equal sign where we're saying that it isn't actually equal to, we've got a different condition. So in this case, we need to find the values of x where 2x minus 5 is less than 7. Now, in solving linear inequalities, we essentially use all the techniques for solving linear equalities, except there's one very important difference, and this is when you multiply by minus 1, or divide by minus 1, or any negative number, then we flip the sign of the inequalities. So what I'm saying here is that this inequality, this is equivalent to, that's what this sign means, is equivalent to minus x is less than minus 2. So we've multiplied by minus one here, and we've had to change or flip the inequality. So these are both the same thing. And that's pretty much the major difference when solving linear inequalities as opposed to equalities. So this is a very simple example. We just add five to both sides to give us two x is less than uh, seven plus five, which is 12. Um, so let me rub that out and write 12. And then we can divide by two. Two is positive, so we don't have to worry about changing the sign. And we get x is less than six. And now the solution is a set of values. So it's any number that's less than six. Five is a solution, four is a solution. Any number you can think of that's less than six is a solution. So as opposed to when you're solving equalities, you only get uh, a number or a few numbers to be the solution. Here we've actually got an infinite number of solutions. It's any solution satisfying this condition. Okay, so now I want to look at a harder example. This uh, example, we're going to look at solving two uh, linear inequalities at the same time. So we have 10 less than or equal to 2x minus 1, and 3x minus 2 is less than 2x plus 4. Now we're interested to find the solutions of both these inequalities at the same time. And essentially what we do is we solve each one separately, and then we consider what uh, the solutions are at the end that satisfy both those conditions. So let me just label these inequalities as number one and number two. And we're first gonna try and solve number one. So all we do is we add one to both sides and we get 11 is less than or equal to two x. And then we divide by two, two is positive, so we don't need to worry about changing the sign. And we get 11 over two has to be less than or equal to x. So this is our first condition from our first equation. Uh, not equation, inequality. <laughs> so now for the second inequality, we want to simplify this. So if we subtract two from both sides, two x from both sides, we get x minus two is less than four. I've just subtracted the minus uh, the two x, and then if we add minus uh, add two to both sides, we just get x is less than six. So now we've worked out the solutions to each inequality individually, and then to find the solution that satisfies both of these at the same time, we just need to work out the values of x that satisfies both these uh, inequalities. And one way we can do this is by looking at a number line. So if this is representing all the real numbers, and we say that zero is here, so then 11 over two is 5.5. So I'll just write 11 over two is here. That's less than six. And what this inequality is saying is that we want all the values of x that are greater than or equal to 11 over 5. This filled in circle represents that we are allowing 11 over 2 to be a solution as well. And then the second inequality is saying if we write 6 here, this isn't, this isn't to scale or anything, but if we write 6 here, then we want all the values of x that are less than 6. So we can represent this as a circle going the other way. So this isn't filled in and this represents that 6 is not a solution, so we can't allow 6 to be a solution. And now to find the values of x satisfies both of these equations is essentially just where these lines overlap. So we have 11 over 2 going up to 6, but not including 6. So these are the solutions, and we can write this as just simply as less uh, x being less than 6 and x being greater than or equal to 11 over 2. So that's just another way to think about the solutions if you need um, a more visual way to solve it. But essentially it's just the values of x that satisfy this inequality and this inequality at the same time. So this is our solution for the original 
uh, simultaneous set of inequalities. Okay, so let's do another example. We'll do three times x minus two in brackets, greater than x minus four. That's the first inequality. And the second one is four x plus 12 is greater than two x plus 17. So we want to solve both these equalities um, at the same time. Let me just label them as inequality one and inequality two. So what we do is we essentially solve each one individually on its own, and then we compare the answers together at the end. So if we look at number one first, uh, we can expand the brackets out here on the left hand side. We get three x minus six is greater than x minus four. And then we're going to subtract an x from both sides uh, to get two x and then add six to both sides. So move over the six to that side and we get six minus four. Six minus four, that's just two. So we get two x is greater than two. And dividing by two, two is positive, so we don't need to worry about changing the sign. So the solution here is just x is greater than one. And if we look at the second inequality, we can subtract two x from both sides. So we'll have two x and then subtract 12 from both sides. So we're moving the two x over that side and moving the 12 onto the right hand side and we get 2x is greater than 17 minus 12. That's the same as 2x being greater than five. Then dividing by two, we get x is greater than five over two. So just as before, we can visualize this on a number line. So this represents all the real numbers and this is zero. Then this first inequality, let's write one here. This is saying that we want all the values that are greater than one but not including one. So that's what the open circle represents. And now for this inequality, we have five over two here. I haven't got much space, I'll write this underneath. Uh, it's saying that we want all the values that are greater than five over two, but not including five over two. So if we consider where these overlap, then we're actually only gonna want the values that are greater than one and greater than five over two, which is just the values that are great, greater than five over two. So in this case, x is greater than five over two is our solution. This satisfies both inequalities and it just happens to coincide with the solution of one of them. Okay, I want to do one final example. We're going to do three x plus eight is less than or equal to 20 and then two times three x minus seven is greater than or equal to x plus six. So these are the two inequalities we're interested in solving. Let me label them as inequality one and inequality two. So the method is exactly the same. Let's just solve the first one first. And if we move the eight onto the right hand side, we're gonna have three X is less than or equal to 12. So 20 minus eight. And then we can just divide by three. Three is positive, so we don't need to worry about changing the sign. And we get X is less than or equal to four. So this is the solution of the first inequality. And for the second inequality, we first expand out the brackets. So we'll have six X minus 14. And this is greater than or equal to X plus six. So then let's subtract an X from both sides. We'll have five X on the left hand side. And then we're gonna add 14 onto the right hand side. So this will give us 14 plus six, which is just 20. So five X is greater than or equal to 20. And then just dividing by five gives us this second solution, x is greater than or equal to four. Okay, so this is a bit more interesting. If we look on the number line and say zero is here and four is here, this inequality is saying that we want all the values of x that are smaller than or equal to four. And this inequality is saying, actually, we want all the values that are bigger than or equal to four. So the values of x that overlap are actually just the value x is equal to four, right? x is equal to four is the only solution to both these equations, right? So only x is less than or equal to four and greater than or equal to four. And in mathematics, this is actually a very common trick to show that something is equal to something. If we can show it's less, uh, less than or equal to something and greater than or equal to that number, then it must be equal to that number. And this is just to show you another example of how to solve linear inequalities.